Hello everyone. Welcome to another webinar from the Ability Series. Today, we'll be talking about communication intervention, augmentative and alternative communication, popularly known as AAC. We'll be discussing in length the communication strategies for children with special needs. The resource person today would be Mrs. Leah Krishilia. She is uh, a principal at Montessori de Cagayan Center for Special Students and Learners Inc. Philippines. We're really happy and lucky to have you here with us, teacher Leah. But more about her a little later. Let us give a couple of more minutes for more of our friends to join us. Till then, enjoy the good music. joined us. I would like to repeat, we are so overwhelmed with the response that we have been receiving for Ability events, both webinars and workshops. People from over a thousand cities have expressed their interest in attending Ability webinars. So thank you so much. We would like to again welcome you to another event. Today we'll be talking about, like I said, communication intervention, augmentative and alternative communication, popularly known as AAC. We'll be discussing in length communication strategies for children with special needs. The speaker for today is Mrs. Leah Grishilia, principal at Montessori de Cagayan Center for Children with Special Needs. So, but uh, I will keep sharing about her, but could you give me a minute to give you all a brief introduction about ability because that's also important, right? So for us, as an organization, all carers of children with special needs are at the center of our universe. Our mission is to give every child an opportunity to thrive. And one way we do that is by making resources more accessible, affordable, and effective for everyone. Of course, through technology and collaboration with caregivers like all of you. We bring to you a host of other support systems, such as resources and also the support and strength from community. To be able to access the resources from Ability, you can visit app.ability.com and click on the resources section here. Everyone should be given the opportunity to enable the best possible chance of discovering their child's true potential. And that's what we intend to do by sharing all these resources and bringing to you all these events because no one should have to do this alone, right? You can also know more about Ability by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It has over hundreds of useful videos from experts around the world and you can stay posted about our upcoming events or upcoming launches through following our Facebook page. The link to access resources, the link to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and the link to follow our Facebook page. All of them is being shared in the chat box right now. And like I said, we keep conducting multiple events for which we have received such a positive and huge response from people around the world. You can check out our upcoming events under the events section here. You can click on app.ability.com and this has a list of all the upcoming workshops and upcoming webinars from Ability. And also the past ones are available under the on-demand category. So what do you need to do to register for any of the Ability event? Simple, you need to log into your Ability account. By now, if you have registered for any of the Ability events in the past, you must have a login credentials. Need to enter your login ID and password and then just a click of this button. Clicking on this orange button will take you directly to the registration or thank you page. 
that means your registration is done for that particular event that you would like to attend. And recently, we have launched Ability Membership Plans. I'm pretty sure a lot of Ability members are attending this webinar today. And to all others, I would like to inform that we have launched the free trial month for Ability Membership. Yes, you heard it correctly. You can avail the benefits of being an Ability member for free. All you need to do is visit on the link that is being shared in the chat box right now and claim your free trial. There are many more benefits of being an Ability member apart from, you know, you can attend various workshops from learning paths which are specially designed by experts from around the world and also team ability. These learning paths will cover different conditions of special needs, behavioral challenges, speech and language challenges, motor skills, remedial education, and many more things. In these learning paths, the workshops that will be conducted will cover essential knowledge, strategies and interventions, assessment, to, assessment tools, case studies, and activities. Well, that's about it. That's about ability. Now let us come back to today's event, which will be conducted by Mrs. Leah Grishila, Teacher Leah, popularly known as Principal at Montessori de Cagayan Center for Special Students and Learners Inc. Philippines. She's a principal of private special needs schools in Philippines with 12 plus years of experience teaching special needs children in both public and private schools. She has conducted various training and seminars and teaching strategies for students with autism, ADHD, learning disability, behavioral problem, intellectual disability, and other related disabilities. Provides integrated guidance and counseling in the field of special education to parents of children with special needs. Also, she has other skills and experience and which includes psychoeducational assessment, functional behavior assessment, IEP planning and development, behavior intervention plan, and special education program implementation. Her last research thesis was on the enhancement of acceptance among parents of children with disabilities. This research helped parents recognize their emotions, leading to an increase in acceptance of their children. Also, she's a member of two international honor societies, the P Gamma Mu and P Kappa Phi. Thank you so much, Teacher Leah, for joining us today. And without further ado, I would like to request you to please take over. The audience is quite excited and eager to hear from you and learn from you. Okay. I'll share my screen now. Sure. Okay. So thank you, Swati, for that very humbling introduction. I feel truly grateful to MDT and all the people behind it uh, for this opportunity to share about AAC. And allow me also to greet our dear parents and teachers who are participating now. Good evening. I hope you will gain some insights that you could use on a daily basis and as a part of your teaching strategies. Okay, so for this session, um, the topics will be covered are definition of AAC, the goals of it, the modes of communication, beneficiaries and implementers, when to use AAC, and, and the benefits of using it. Also, I will discuss some of the basic tools such as text, flashcards, communication boards, social stories, synthetic voice, and advanced electronic AACs. Also, I will give some tips on how to integrate AAC in the school and, the, and in the classroom. And lastly, we will have some discussion about some selection considerations and applications of AAC. So now let us begin. So AAC stands for, again, Augmentative and Alternative Communication, wherein augment means to enhance or to improve. It is anything that aids or helps a person improve his ability to communicate. Also, alternative means another way or means. There are a lot of tools and strategies that we could use, such as um, sign language, pictures, writing, and even the use of devices. And communication means the sending and receiving of messages so that people will understand each other. So some of the basic communication skills include requesting, commenting, 
gaining information, uh, gaining information and sharing of experiences. Okay, so in summary, AAC are tools and strategies that an individual uses to solve everyday communicative challenges. So even without speech or a lack of it, we can, we can still communicate our daily needs by using these AAC tools. So these tools are here to help us. And with the goal to achieve the most effective communication possible for the individual in order to maximize their potential and lead the highest quality of life possible. Again, since every person is unique, we really have to, to do a thorough assessment in order for us to determine what type of AAC would be effective, how to use it, when to use it, so that the person will have a meaningful experience in life through communication. Okay, so what then are the modes of communication? So here, we have two types of AAC. The first one is the un unaided system, and the other one is the aided system, which I will discuss further. Okay, so unaided systems are those uh, oftenly called the no technology. So these are the type of communication that occurs naturally, as you can see in the picture. So the user relies on his own body to convey a message. And it does not involve any use of special materials or equipment. So some of the examples are vocalization, natural speech, symbols, gestures, facial expression, body language, finger spelling, manual alphabet, among others. And then aided system requires the use of tools and various equipment. As you can see there, there are examples of aided systems. Examples uh, are objects, for example, holding a food that you want to eat. And for another example is actual photos. Um, example, you show a picture of a dog to start a conversation about pets. And then drawings and pictures, you can use, for example, a picture of a person drinking to indicate that you are thirsty. Traditional orthography means the simple writing down of notes on a piece of paper or um, sending uh, a message through a computer or texting. Digitized uh, speech, on the other hand, means the recording of the voice to be played later on so that you will be able to express your, uh, your interests or your wants and needs to other people in case that you cannot talk. And then synthesized speech uh, uses a computer algorithm that converts text to spoken uh, output. So these aided systems can be high technology or low technology. And <clears throat> I will discuss this also. Okay, for the low technology, as you can see there, it does not require computers or other high technology equipment. So if you can see in this picture, there are uh, lots of pictures I, again. So, so AAC, most of AAC tools thrive on pictures. So it displays words or concepts in static or unchanging form. So for example, here, the first picture is the pecs, and then we have the flashcard. We have the visual schedules, the communication board, which, um, which, which presents different kinds of pictures that the child could use, for example, for, for eating, for dressing, and for other activities. And then we also have the al alphabet display and adaptive tray. So these are uh, alternative and aug augmentative form which uh, display an alphabet for the person to look at or to point to be able to spell words so that he or she can communicate. Also, the communication vest that is usually worn by parents for the child also either to point or to gaze to be able to express his wants or needs. Okay, so for the high technology, we have uh, here some of the examples. Uh, we use computers or other high technology equipment, and it allows the users to be more independent. But that is if 
that person was well trained meaning in the early acquisition of the skill he still has to be uh, assisted but when he becomes adept of using the gadget or the technology he will become more independent so it produces produces visual outputs such as text or messages and then voice outputs such as um, digitized or um, synthetic voice or speech so some of the examples are uh, sgds which means speech generating devices like the go talk and the dynavox so these are the um, more common devices that are readily available in the market. And some are apps in smartphones, tablets, and iPads, such as the Proloco to go. So uh, these tools are very helpful and it is used in different um, settings and with different conditions. So now, who are the persons who may benefit from using AAC? So we have a list here. Uh, so the beneficiaries are those with neurodevelopmental disorders such as autism, intellectual disability, Down syndrome, learning disability, among others. Also those with congenital disabilities such as cerebral palsy, those with sensory impairments such as hearing impairment or visual impairment, and those with motor neuron diseases or, or those with ALS or spinal injury with acquired neurological disorders. Um, a person may have a problem with speech when, when he, he suffers from stroke or traumatic brain injury. And then others have speech language and communication disorders. Okay. So now, if we have those uh, beneficiaries, we also have implementers and support pers persons. So who are they? Of course, the person needing AAC themselves because they are the recipient of the intervention or the program. And then family and friends. So family is very important because you are the expert in the field of your, ch of, uh, of your child's development, of his needs, and once and you are you are very helpful in in the assessment process because you will give all the information and and the details to the therapist or to the to the person who will assess your child and also family and friends communicate with the child on a daily basis and also we have caregivers and support personnel so these are secondary support persons that also interact with the child. So in AAC, we want to maximize um, all the opportunity that you can use to aid a person or to communicate with the person using the tool so that the person will be more, um, will be able to communicate better. And from the professional side, we have the SPED teachers, speech language pathologists the the speech language pathologists are the expert and the lead person in making and designing the program for a person who needs an aac also the communication specialist and the aac specialist for those who have severe um, conditions ot or occupational therapist uh, physical therapist and assistive technology specialist should be included Okay, and then other trained personnel such as the behavior technician. Why? Because, for example, if the child has autism, on top of the communication um, problem, a person or a behavior technician could help with the behavior problems. So in implementing these tools, one or more of these above mentioned persons or support persons could be included with the goal of um, providing or reducing the number of implementers to as few as possible uh, until the child or the user of the tool could manipulate or could use it independently. Okay, so what are the indicators that AAC would be recommended for your child? Okay, so these are, these are the things that you have to keep in mind if you are planning or thinking about using an AAC tool for your child or for your student. First, when the child re child's receptive language has potential, 
meaning, the child has understanding, listening comprehension, attending skills, and can follow instructions. And it is present and emerging. Second, when the child has severe motor speech issues, but will be able to operate or manipulate a device or may need some form of switch scanning or eye gaze. So we have to determine what is the level of uh, motor skills so that we will also be able to provide the appropriate tool. And then when there is little or no progress on speech for quite some time, meaning if previous intervention may 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 not uh, be uh, helping we can we can use these tools the aac tools and then when experts on your team suggest using aac so experts you know they give you advice and they give you um, suggestions for you to choose the appropriate aac for your child or for your student and lastly when your child can thrive by using AAC, meaning the child can progress, the child will improve by using these tools. And it is proven by research. It is safe, it is effective, it is evidence-based. Okay, so now uh, these are the benefits of using AAC. So for, for, for children, especially those with uh, autism and other conditions, these are the ways on uh, how AAC can improve communication. So first, it enhances receptive and expressive language so that others could understand the child or any person using the AAC. And then it reduces frustration and behavior problems. So once the child can communicate his wants, his needs, so he will be able to express himself. So it creates, um, it creates uh, uh, a self-confidence for him to, to allow to express his, his uh, feelings even in the most simple way. And then it facilitates social interaction. So when the child's problem behaviors were already addressed, the child now can participate in social situations. He can respond, he can tell that he wants something or anything by using the tool. And then it supports learning and cognitive skills. When the child is able to respond and, and say what he wants, now he can also participate in class. And by doing that, it helps with the child's self-esteem and it empowers the child. So putting this all together, it will increase overall enjoyment and engagement in life. So that's the beauty of using AAC. Okay. So now let us come to the uh, basics of the following AAC tools that I mentioned, I mentioned a while ago. So first off, we have the Picture Exchange Communication System or the PECS. So initially, the idea of PECS is to hand over a single picture of an item or an activity that the child wants to the communicative partner. And on the other hand, the communicative partner will hand in or give the child that thing or object that he is requesting for. And its goal is to teach intentional and functional communication. So what do we mean by functional communication? Functional communication means uh, teaching the child an alternative behavior uh, to be able to communicate his wants, his needs, his feelings, and whatever he needs. Okay, so later on, I will discuss uh, some more examples of fun functional communication. Okay, so who are the users of PECS? So children or adults with autism, nonverbal or preverbal, those who have little verbal or no verbal communication, and children and adults with a range of speech, language, and communication needs. Okay, so... Wait for a while. Okay, so PEX has um, different pieces. So this is how we use or we teach a picture exchange communication system. So uh, we have phase one. So in phase one, the child is taught how to communicate. So again, the child will hand in a single picture of item to the communicative partner. In phase two, 
um, distance and persistence, the child will generalize this skill by handling in the picture to different people in different places and different social situation and across distances. So in phase one and two, a communicative partner and a prompter are needed. In phase three, our, it is divided into two. So phase 3A, simple discrimination, the child will uh, hand AI will discriminate pictures of two items, two preferred items. So the child should be able to give the communicative partner the preferred item. And then in phase 2B, the conditional discrimination, the child has to hand in or choose or discriminate between two pictures of two items, um, two preferred items, and then he will, he will again hand over it to the communicative partner. And in phase four, sentence structure, the child now is learning to, to make simple sentences in a sentence strip with the I want picture and then the object. Uh, with descriptive vocabulary and attributes, the child expands the sentence by adding adjectives, verbs, and preposition. So in phase one to phase four, verbal prompts are not used. Okay, so in phase five, the child now um, do responsive requesting, uh, which is answering to questions such as what do you want? And then in phase six, the commenting, the child now learns to to comment or give feedback for questions such as what do you see, what do you hear, what do you feel? And the child uses uh, the I, I, I see, I hear, I feel sentence stream. Okay, so that's for the phases of text. Okay, next we have um, flashcards. So flashcards are pictures that contain words, number, and symbols that is shown by the teacher as a learning aid. And then it is... Uh, commonly used to expand the vocabulary, generalized communication, and label items. So since children with autism are, many of them are visual learners, so it's a very helpful tool for them to communicate what they want. Okay, so again, who may use them? So children with autism and others with language and communication challenges. Also, we have communication boards. So what, what are these? So these boards are fixed displays of words, symbols, pictures grouped together in a board to facilitate communication. So by, by pointing to the picture, the child will be able, able to communicate his needs. For example, I am talking and then he wants me to stop and then he will just point to the picture stop, something like that. So it is used to express thoughts and internal feelings also such as pain and fear. And those children with neurodevelopmental disorders and acquired neurological disorders could use these tools. Okay, next we have social stories. So a social story is a narrative that provides the child a preview of what will happen by providing some social situations, teaching the child how to behave and what to expect. So these are very helpful for children with autism because it allows the child to to transition or to, to expect, for example, this one, doctor's checkup. So what, what will I do there? What it is to be like when I am having a checkup? So that is the beauty of social stories. It prepares the child for social situations. So children with autism also can use it and then those with difficulty dealing with social situations. And next, we have synthetic voice and other advanced electronic AAC. So these are speech generating devices and voice output communication aids that help individuals communicate by touching a picture or a word on a device that provides speech output. And other advanced electronic devices can be accessed in different ways through eye gaze, through joystick or switch scanning, depending on the need of the individual, especially if the person has motor skill issues, so uh, or those with do not have uh, extremities, so cannot operate with using the fingers. So there are other means on how to access these gadgets. 
Again, children with autism and other neuro neurodevelopmental disorders and significant communication disabilities and progressive de degenerative disorders can use this. So the more sophisticated the, the, the tool, the better it is to be used for those who have severe conditions. Okay, so now how do we integrate AAC in the curriculum and in the classroom? So we have this, uh, what we call um, curriculum tree. So it is a visual mapping tool that can be used to guide the IEP team, meaning the implementers and those on the educational aspect of the child in planning how and when a student will use the communication system. So a visual mapping tool is just a simple form of uh, paper with boxes on it that the, that the team will put there what tool will be used, what are the needs of the student, how often it will be used, and then who will provide the program, and then um, who will provide also the materials or the system or the AAC tool. Okay, so in doing this, um, we can integrate the tool uh, in different settings, especially in school. So for this um, presentation, I will discuss some of the tips or strategies that we use in our school for the early grades or the preschoolers. So during arrival, it is a sort of um, SOP for the teachers to, to encourage um, communication. So our teachers uh, during arrival uh, encourage our students to to just wave a hand. So it's a form of communication. It's an unaided system. So to wave a hand, and if the child is not yet talking, we can just say, hi, Dan, good morning. If the child doesn't re respond, it's okay. So by doing that, you are modeling to the child what communication is like, okay? So next, we have during pre-circle time. So during pre-circle time, uh, this is where we use uh, ABA principles of antecedent manipulation. So what do we do? So uh, the, the items or the activities that the child really wants, we put it on a shelf in a higher location where the child can see it but cannot reach it. Why? Because we're encouraging or motivating the child to request for that particular item. So. By doing that, the child is now initiating conversations, okay? And we want that because by, by that simple gesture, the child is now beginning to improve his or her communication skills. Next, during circle time. So here we can use the different tools in, uh, for example, in reading a story. So we can use specs uh, that the child can also use a communication board. For example, he will point to the person of uh, to the picture of a pause to to tell the teacher that okay, teacher, you have to you have to pause because I am processing and you have to turn the page back or something like a picture of uh, a picture of the arrow uh, arrow right arrow next for the for for the child to indicate okay, teacher, I am ready now. Go to the next page. Something like that. So. There are many ways on how we can use these tools in classroom setting. Next is during post-circle time. Again, we can use these uh, different tools to comment, to, to ask questions, to answer yes or no questions, and to give suggestions. And also during recess time. Okay, so this is more of a, a generalized or bigger setting already. So I have a very funny story here. We have a child in elementary that uh, he's verbal, but he doesn't like to, to, to speak uh, Filipino or native language or Tagalog. Uh, so what we did was ask him to go to the canteen and order the food for us. So since he doesn't want to, to use Filipino language to the canteen staff, what he did was he drew all the food that we want. On other times, he would list them into into a sheet of paper and hand it to the to the staff and then go back to us with the order. So, so by this uh, by this form of communication, the child is uh, is making use of, of the different tools to be able to communicate. Funny story, but the the ending was he get 
tired of doing that so he was he he was already forced or motivated to talk to the canteen staff so that's uh that's for the recess uh, story okay next dismissals so these tools would also be used uh, to say goodbye to select the person whom they want to sit on a bus and to relay messages about the school event and of course to use during emergency so it's very important for the child to express or to communicate to know that he is in danger so how do we do that if he cannot talk so we use these different tools okay now um these are also some considerations in choosing the aac so first we have to keep in mind the child who needs it because we have to identify the needs the abilities and the preferences of the child to be able to choose the right aac and then the support persons this person should be confident and comfortable in using these tools and also the financial resources and costs so um some of the unaided or most of unaided systems are uh, costless while those that are um technologically advanced or sophisticated are or cost more uh, expensive and then the usefulness and practicality among all environments so we want a tool that is readily available when the child needs it okay okay now let us go to some of the applications so while many articles claim that there are no prerequisites in using these tools my experience tells otherwise so why so in any intervention to be successful there should be the child should have some at least some or at least i mean at least these basic um, skills for example in using text so the child must have attending skills such as focus sitting waiting skills so those things are very important because the child has to look at the pictures has to discriminate okay so compliance and following simple instructions are also very important because the child has to has to do some steps or procedures in doing this uh, or in manipulating or using these tools and also the ability to discriminate because in text you have to discriminate between pictures so the child must be able to do that so for the parent and for the teacher they should determine the appropriate reinforcers because text thrives on the reinforcers or what the child really like for him or her to initiate a conversation also the availability of all pictures and items needed okay so for the flashcards again also basic skills attending skills scanning and then tap or labeling or identifying skills and for the parents and teachers you have to choose the appropriate pictures so for those who are more advanced you can now choose a uh, 2d pictures but for those who are just starting you can use the 3d ones okay and then um for the for the communication board again attending compliance and motor skills because you have to point so you will need some motor skills there. And then for the parents and teachers, you should have a complete set of pictures to represent categories of the child's needs. And it should always be readily available. Okay, for social stories, the child should have visual and auditory skills because he has to see, he has to listen to pictures. I mean, he has to, to listen to stories. And then comprehension and retention skills for the child to be able to understand what the story is about. And then he will be asked or she will be asked what happened in the story. So it requires comprehension and retention skills and also sequencing skills since uh, in, in, in social stories, there are a series of steps and procedures that should be followed. And then for the parent or the teacher, uh, the appropriate choice of story. So if the child is already advanced again the the story could be more complex but if not it should not be it should all uh, only be simple stories okay and the last one for the synthetic voice and advanced electronics so you should uh, the child should have auditory and scanning skills also motor skills uh, the child may have motor issues that requires another way of access for the device and then also following instructions and for the parents and teachers, 
the appropriate choice of devices also. So uh, the team of uh, the team, the SPED team and the AAC team will help you in choosing the right AAC for your child. Okay, so uh, with these tools, I hope that uh, right now, if you are thinking of using some tools, you have you have some ideas already on what to choose and how it works. Okay. So, uh, uh, so with this uh, with this uh, topic, I just want to leave as a a message of hope. So here it is: God doesn't give special kids to special parents. He takes ordinary imperfect people and gives them with his great greatest treasures and therein he creates special parents so to be a parent or a teacher of a child with special needs is not easy but regardless of the capabilities and limitations of the child let us embrace them the way they are um, uh, actually words sincere words and empowering words don't come only from the mouth. It comes from the heart. So with that, thank you everyone for listening. Thanks a lot, Teacher Leah. That was quite an informative session. Uh, a lot of people are thanking you. And before I move to the next segment of the today's session, I would like to inform all the attendees that if you wish to attend the next webinar from Ability, which will be on yoga to manage and improve the wellness of children with special needs, you want to visit the link that is being shared in the chat box right now. Also, if you wish to uh, attend the next web workshop from Ability, which will be on reading posture and development of major skills conducted by one of our popular speakers, Miss Rita from US, you can check out the link being shared in the chat box right now and register for the event. So that's about it. Now, uh, let's move to the question and answer segment. We have received a lot of interesting questions from around the world, teacher Leah. Uh, so the first one that I have is from Dr. Pyle. Dr. Pyle is asking us what can be some of the calming down strategies which we should try that can be implemented to benefit the child throughout the treatment session that is going on. Uh, Dr. Pyle has been trying music, chanting sounds, or things like that to keep the child engaged during therapy session. Uh, but uh, do you have any other suggestions to add on to it? Uh, okay, so uh, with that, actually, to be able to identify really what, what, uh, what type of, for example, here in the communication tool that we, can, we, we should use, we have to really assess the child first. So by doing that, we will know what, what the child really likes. So in ABA, we have, uh, we have functional behavior assessment. And we can also do that in other therapies. So it is really, really important for the therapist, for the team, for the SPED team to really know. No, we don't, we, we, our common mistake is that we assume. Sometimes we, we, are, we get really very excited and then assume that, Oh, my child will like this and like that. But is it really the case? So uh, I think um, for an intervention to be, to be that effective, it really requires a thorough, thorough assessment. And um, let us focus on the child. So what the child really likes. So with that, uh, I think that's I can think of. I, I hope you understand what the child really likes and yeah. that is what will help. The next one that we have is from Swadeen. Swadeen is asking us, Teacher Leah, if you could uh, throw some light on how uh, the topic that we discussed in detail today, AAC, could help in enhancing the quality of life for children with special needs. Okay, again, I, I had a slide there. So how, how does um, AAC help in improving communication? So uh, I'll begin with, uh, with uh, for example, let us put ourselves on their shoes. So if, if we cannot communicate what we want, it makes us so upset, right? It makes us so upset because other people will not understand us. So it is the same case with uh, these children who cannot talk. 
So we do not know what they want. Also, they cannot express what they want because they cannot use words. But by using these pictures, these tools, uh, I, the child will have that opportunity. For example, the child wants a uh, uh, banana, but then you think he wants apple, and then you, you give the child apple. So the child will, will get upset because that's not, uh, that's not what he or she wants. So by using these tools, the child, for example, by using pecs. So when we teach the child to use pecs, he will learn how to make simple sentences. So there is a picture of the word I want, and then the picture of um, banana, and then put it on a strip, and then hand it over to the person or the communicative partner. And then now you know that the child wants the, uh, the banana, and then you give the child the banana. With that, the behavior, the problem behaviors lesson also, the child will be able to communicate appropriately. Some kids, uh, some children that we have communicate through hitting, through head banging. So by, by giving those tools, uh, we, we teach functional uh, communication training, which is giving or teaching the child an alternative behavior that is socially appropriate or acceptable for him to communicate. So that's how it works. Got it. Interesting. And you were talking about PECS, teacher Leah. So I have uh, two related questions from Ritu and Rizwan about PECS. Ritu wants you to elaborate on the full form of PECS and Rizwan wants you to elaborate on how PECS can be helpful for children with autism. So if you could help. Uh, okay. them understand this so so actually pex has uh six phases as i discussed a while ago so it's just some kind of a uh, simple uh, communication system that um but the the target really is to for the child to initiate conversations because uh, most most of these children don't want or doesn't know or they just don't know how to communicate and then they cannot speak so by 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 uh, them giving that picture to the communicative partner, the other person will know what the child prefers, and all the items that is in there in the in the in the text uh, text binder or book, it it uh, these are the items that he really likes. Okay, so so by using this one uh, this tool, the child can be able to to. To, to tell or to express what he likes or what, what he doesn't like. So that's, uh, that's how PEX works. And uh, if, if you are interested in learning it, there are uh, training for, for PEX. So it has um, uh, different levels. It is taught in different levels also. So you can, anyone could learn how to use PEX. Okay, you, you only have to, uh, to spend some time and then efforts and resources for it. Great. Spend some time and effort and uh, you could learn pecs to be able to help your children better. Interesting point. Uh, okay, the next one that we have is from Chimmy from Bhutan. Uh, she and her group of special education teachers have been consistently watching our webinars. So Chimmy is asking us, how can I get a non-verbal child who is also non-reactive to any of the class activities besides flapping his thumb in front of his eyes to use pecs and another child she has another case example uh, where she says that there's another child who's also non-verbal who just loves to spin a particular object and enjoys watching a prayer wheel rotating or something like this so for these two cases in particular how can pecs help or how can she help the children better okay so uh, I already I also discussed this in my presentation. So it's in the using the AAC part. So it was uh, discussed there that there should be uh, some prerequisites for for them to learn these tools. For example, the PECS. But before learning these tools, the child should have the basic skills. So how do how do we how do we teach the child to have that skills? So in our, uh, in our school, we have functional behavioral assessment, wherein we focus on determining the function of the behavior first. 
So if the child is uh, flop, just flopping his hands, why? So what is the function? Is it, is it um, uh, attention? Is it escape? Is it tangible or is it sensory? Because we have to really determine what is triggering that form of behavior. So if we, if we already know, if we, if we do the assessment and then we identify what the function is, then we will give or we will develop or implement some interventions for the child to learn the basic skills. And there, if the child already has have that skills, and then it would be it would be easy for us to teach anything to the child. So uh, that's also the beauty of um, assessment. So we really have to rely on assessments as well. All right. Totally. So checklists and assessments could be a good way to get started. If you wish to avail some of the checklists being offered by Ability, please do register your interest for Ability Checklist. I'll request my team members to please share the link for Ability Checklists in the chat box right now. The next question that I have is from Charlene. Charlene is asking us, what can you tell or advise to the parents who are not open to using AAC for their children with special needs? Okay, so it's uh, actually it's a common concern for most parents, actually. So um, I think uh, it's uh, if you really want to help the child communicate and for you to understand what, what it feels like to not uh, be able to talk, so I think AAC are uh, a great uh, strategy to use. So because uh, also research uh, tells that it is uh, it is safe, it is effective, and it doesn't. Um, there's this uh, wrong notion that when we use pictures instead of words, the child might not be able to to speak anymore or even attempt to speak. But uh, according to research. It's uh, it's the other uh, no, it's the opposite. So by using text actually or other forms of uh, AAC, the child will be able to um, to learn some pivotal skills. So meaning meaning pivotal skills, uh, you teach the child uh, one skill, for example, requesting. So in text, we teach the child to request, and then later on, the child will generalize that skill. And then we'll learn now how to, uh, for example, how to refuse appropriately. So because in PECS, we, 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 we teach the child to request, for example, the preferred item. And then uh, we, we, give the, we intentionally give the wrong one. And then the child will answer back, no. So I mean, from this simple skill, by using these tools, the child would actually improve more on the other higher higher skills. So I think uh, for most parents, um, of course, you have to uh, to gain more uh, knowledge and awareness on, on how these tools work. So it needs careful study, uh, decision making, what tools to use, when to use it, and is it really appropriate for your child? So if if these tools could um, could help the child improve the communication, and I'm saying that it would, because <clears throat> it is uh, based on our experience that these tools are proven effective. So I guess uh, you can consider using these tools. Totally. Interesting. The next one that I have, I'm rushing through, uh, you know, questions because we have a lot of okay. them and I want to cover as many as possible. The next one is from Muhammad. Muhammad is asking how to make a child feel comfortable in using these aids that you talked about uh, it, with AAC or PECS. Okay. So um, I think uh, you can you can make the, the learning more fun. For example, in using flashcards, uh, you, you just don't force the child to learn it. You, in, you include a uh, sort of play. For example, in using flashcards, you, you, you just do not uh, show the, the cards. You can use it to make games, actually, for your, for your lesson or for your sessions. And also, uh, do, not, do not force the child into anything that you want him to do. 
So how do you do right. this? In acquiring um, a new skill, uh, because in, in using these tools, the child should learn a new, a new skill, a skill that he doesn't uh, know yet. So in, in, in teaching the child, we use um, ABA principle, which is basic skills training, wherein you, you model, you, you imitate, you practice, and you give feedback. So how do we do this? So for example, you want to teach a child to, to request an item. So you, you instruct the child first. Okay, so show, and then you model, you show, and then the child will imitate it. And then if the child does it, then okay, good job. Or if the child doesn't do it, you can say, uh, you can redirect him. So in behavior therapy, redirecting means um, going back to the, to the same activity, but not really obvious for the child. So for example, to redirect the child, if the child uh, gave the wrong picture, you make, you make him clap and then go back, repeat it. Model, imitate, practice for fluency, and then feedback. So by doing that repeatedly, the child will, will learn that new skill. And that would make the child comfortable. Okay, so uh, I guess do not force the child into something that is... Uh, because if we, if we force the child, it will create trauma on the side of, of, the, of the child. And the child may not, may not use that tool. So that's right. It. Interesting. So making it fun for the child is absolutely yeah, yeah. important. That's uh, in a valuable insight for all the people who are watching this webinar today. Okay, the next question that I have is uh, again from Rizwan. Rizwan is asking us, what kind of pictures uh, should one use in the communication cards? Should it should them be real or some clip art or cartoon pictures or illustrations would also work? Okay, so in our experience, for those uh, children who are just in the initial stage, we use actually uh, before pictures, we use real objects. Okay, so uh, right. you, you teach, uh, for example, uh, discriminating uh, pictures. First, a real object, you show the actual apple. Okay, and then, right. and then when, when the child masters it, this is apple, apple, and then you add banana. Apple, banana, apple, banana. And then when the child masters that skill, you can now uh, go to uh, pictures of real objects. Okay, so there are stages. So you, you focus first on the actual and then picture of the actual and then the 2D picture and then later on only the words. Okay, and later on, maybe later on, if the child really acquired those skills, it would even lead, if there's a chance for the child to talk, the child would be able to say apple or banana. So that's how it works. So do not be, uh, I mean, it's really uh, a suggestion, a consideration to use these tools because it will aid into uh, better communication, including speech itself. Sure, great. Since we are running short of time, we'll take three last questions for today. Uh, the next one that I have is from Jia. Jia is asking, uh, when we are creating a communication board, uh, at max, how many pictures should it include? And, uh, or for a minimum or a maximum, what should it be? And if there is an age limit for uh, AACs? Okay. So for, for the pictures, it depends again on the capability of the child. But pecs, uh, uh, in, in phase four of pecs, the child should uh, already be able to use at least 20, 20 pictures, meaning the child already mastered 20 items. Okay, so uh, when it comes to age, uh, children and adults could use it. Again, it, it, it really depends on the capability of the child. So even right, right. if it, the child is already an adult, but his cognitive level is uh, like for elementary kids, so then there, there will, there, uh, we will start on the capability of the child. So, right. so we can determine what, how many pictures and what, uh, what to teach. Got it. 
Great. Okay, so the next one is from Yeshi. Yeshi is asking us, what language should we preferably use while using PECS for a non-verbal child in school and at home? Because she's wondering if listening to two different languages for one same picture, if this might confuse the non-verbal child who already has receptive language difficulties. Ah, okay. So actually in, in communication, uh, I think because in our case, this is a common question of most of our parents. So because uh, children now, they really learn English fast through gadgets, through video clips in YouTube. So um, I think uh, start with, with, the, with the language that the child really understands. For example, if it's the native language, then it's okay. Use, the, use that language. And later on, the child will learn how to speak in English or other languages. So I think, mm, yeah, I think it would confuse if you use it at the same time because uh, for children it's for us it's easy for us to to discriminate what language for example uh, in in our case um sagging is in english banana so for a child with autism and other conditions it would be hard so right especially that they are learning so many things at the same time so <laughs> we don't want the, to confuse the child more so we, maybe we could use that. And later on, we aim for, for higher skills. So we build the foundation first. We should have foundation really, really first. Got it. Interesting. Okay. So the last one for today is, and before I move to the last question for today, I would like to inform all our attendees and remind them once again that if you wish to attend the next webinar from Ability, the link is being shared in the chat box right now please do register. If you wish to attend the next workshop from Ability around motor skills, the link again is being shared in the chat box. Do register. And if you want to avail and attend all these workshops across different learning paths from Ability, you must take a free membership uh, trial from Ability, which is currently being offered. And this is a limited uh, time period offer. So do not miss this and grab this opportunity to register for free membership trial. I'll request my team members to please share the link for participants to go for and opt for free membership trial. Okay, the last one that we have is from Mary, Joy, and so many others have also asked if you could share some technology uh, help uh, associated with AAC, which can be readily used, or if there are any apps that could be downloaded in iOS or Android platform. Okay, so in my presentation, I mentioned uh, three devices there. First is the GoTalk. So it's a, it's a communication device that when you press the button, it says the word. And the, the word or the sentences. For example, there's a, there's a picture of a, an apple juice. So when you press that button, it will say, I'm thirsty. I want apple juice. Something like that. So, and it has uh, different folders on it that you can, you can uh, record your voice. Actually, the best thing to do is to record the voice of the communicative partner or the people around the child. So the child will hear, will listen to it, and then and then will know that oh, this is the voice of my mom, something like that. And then um, uh, you can you can also customize it by it has uh, like a compartment where you can insert, uh, you can uh, make overlays or pictures of the items, and then depending on the need of the child because we focus on the uh, on the need of the child so what are what are his needs for example for eating dressing and so many other things so you include everything there okay so that's one that's the go talk and um for the other one the prologue to go uh, it's an an application a software that you can install in an ipad iphone or laptop and then it works the same thing so and but it's more uh, sophisticated and you can you can add many, many more pictures and uh, sentences and it has a lot of functions also. And the other one is the Dynavox. Uh, it is commonly used uh, for those with severe conditions like cerebral palsy because it is eye, uh, it's an eye tracking device. 
So by by using eye gaze, you can access that um, device. Okay. So for for the ano, for the for the uh, ones that we are freely available in in Android and iOS, uh, we have this text to voice. These are some of the common ones that I also downloaded. <laughs> okay, so I can communicate. We have Lilo, Let Me Talk, Speech Assistant, Mr. Pex, and Echo App. So actually, if you uh, Google them, you will you'll just see it and then go to Google Play and download it and try using it for your child. But uh, more importantly, I want to say that uh, assessment really, really is very important because one, one device could be effective for a person or a child, but it will not be effective for another person. So it really has to do with the assessment, the needs of the child, his abilities, his preferences. So that's it. Totally. Thanks a lot, teacher Leah. That was really, really helpful and really, really informative. People are thanking you for such an amazing session today. And I also see some of the people are asking about how to submit the feedback. Uh, the link for submitting your feedback is being shared in the chat box right now. And even if you're facing some difficulty in submitting the feedback right now, do not worry. In a few hours time, you will be receiving an email in your inbox, the email ID that you have used for registering for Abilities webinar. In that very same email ID's inbox, you will receive a link to claim your certificate. You will need to click on the claim certificate button, share the feedback about today's session, and then uh, get your certificate downloaded. So yeah, uh, that answers both your questions related to certificate and feedback. And uh, that teacher Leah kind of brings us to the end of today's session. How did you like interacting to the audience today? And how was your experience? Uh, it was very fun. <laughs> And uh, the, the audience are very engaging by sending all those questions. <laughs> totally, yeah, <that's> totally. <laughs> the chat box is getting hanged because the audience is such an engaged one. I really am working really hard to read through all the messages that uh, we are receiving at the same time. And the Ability team is working really hard to respond to all the messages uh, that are being received. But do not worry, dear attendees, we are here to listen and to solve all your queries. So if you have any additional ones which were not addressed during this webinar, you can write to us at supportability.com. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining today's session. Once again, gentle reminder about uh, registering for the upcoming events from Ability. The link has been shared in the chat box for the upcoming webinar and the workshop. And also, do not forget to take a free trial for Ability membership so that you can attend all the different workshops across different learning paths from Ability. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Do not forget to share your feedback. That will help us improve the experience further for us. Thank you so much, Teacher Leah for such an engaging session. Thank you so much for your valuable and precious time. Thank you also. Bye-bye.